Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Joyce. I'm in, in here in Canada. I'm always sharing with you information on how you can immigrate to Canada. And uh, lately we have been talking about um, Atlantic Immigration Pilot, which is uh, slowly being made a permanent uh, pathway for coming to Canada. It's not going to be a pilot anymore. So I think very soon they're going to make it a permanent pathway. And I like it. I like it because those four provinces in the Atlantic, they are providing jobs, they're advertising jobs to the public for international recruitment. So I embrace that and we appreciate that some of those provinces are doing a good job to provide job offers that we can all apply. Thank you guys for coming to this show. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking my videos. Thank you for your comments. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love all of you. So today we are going to look um, uh, at a province that most of you don't talk about a lot. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the province is tiny. It's not so tiny, it's not so small, but it's a quiet province that many people don't talk about. It's called Newfoundland Labrada. New, Newfoundland, it's a Newfoundland. So somebody found that land. Who found it? Somebody should do a research for us and tell us exactly what happened so that they called it Newfoundland. So somebody found that. It was a land that was hidden and then somebody found it. It's one of the Atlantic provinces. We say that the, the, the Atlantic provinces are four. Somebody should name for us on the comments, tell us how many, what are these provinces that are in the Atlantic and what are the requirements so far. What have you understood? What, what is your take home <laughs> on the four provinces in the Atlantic? What are the requirements? Can we hear from you? We said the teacher will be asking you guys questions. Hmm? What are we learning from this? So let me know if you know the four provinces that are in the Atlantic and what are the requirements for you to get nominated in those provinces. One of them is Newfoundland. It's here with me. Yesterday we did New Brunswick. The other day I did with you the summary of the four. So if you have not watched those videos, you better go and watch because you'll be hanging. Canada immigration, if you don't follow step by step, if you miss any of my videos, you're going to be hanging. All the time you'll be hanging like this. So you better listen, go watch to those videos, and then you can be at par with us. So I, I, I was researching about this province, and I realized that uh, it also, it's also it's equally good. We know we always say that New Brunswick is good. This one is also not bad. And this, there, you know, I said all the provinces have got their own website. And I, I always recommend that people apply for jobs in the provinces and in the small communities. Stop looking, going to look for jobs in the in the in the indeed, and don't go to look for jobs in the in the what indeed and LinkedIn. Those ones are not managed by Canada government. You can easily find scammers there, and you can be conned. And you know they have started they have start studied Canada immigration. So they can they can even send you forms. They can send you forms, tell you you have a job. So for us to recruit you in this job, you need to pay us this amount of money. And anybody who is asking you for money to recruit you, just know that one is a scammer. Because Canada immigration, apart from the registration fee which you pay to the government. There is no employer who is ever, ever going to ask you for money. How, I mean, so back home when someone is helping you to, I mean, when somebody is recruiting you, do you pay them? If you are applying for a job to go and work in a hospital in your home country, does that hospital pay you? I mean, it doesn't even make sense for an employer to ask for money. I mean, do you pay them for, it doesn't add up. So for you to find genuine jobs, I'm going to show you for all the provinces, I'm going to be showing you the job banks, where the job banks are. This one is Newfoundland. And you need to search anything, you can type here. Make sure that you're on the official website because there are so many other funny, funny companies 
that you, yeah, that, that that have got this link on the on Google. Make sure that yours is under gov.nl dot ca this one is for the province of newfoundland that's why it has nl dot ca ah okay so newfoundland is here immigration programs and this one i found it on the frequently asked questions it has the same immigration pathways like the other three because we said there are four of them which are in the atlantic newfoundland new brunswick um nova scotia Nova Scotia and New and Prince Edward, those four. So each one of them has got their way of recruiting. I showed you for New Brunswick. Today I'm going to show you for Newfoundland how you can apply for jobs. Because one of the requirements is that you find a job. If you want to come to Canada and you do not have money to prove funds, because remember, remember the, the provinces that, re, that do not require you to have a job offer they want you to have a bank statement a very good bank statement for the provinces that do not require a bank statement they need you to have a job offer so there is no easy way there is no shortcut you have either to find a job offer or to find money two way if you have got money and you want your children to come here to study and they have a degree and or they have got form four and some skills send them here under these provincial nominations if you can prove funds so migration is a key component of the economic and labor market growth in in this province our mandate is to help provide newcomers with accurate information about the immigration process and programs offered by the province so uh, someone is asking here do i need a job uh, you need uh, you to yes to be eligible for newfoundland and and this um an atlantic immigration program nomination um, province nomination, you must have a full-time offer of employment. Uh, full-time means you will work a minimum of 30 hours per week. That's a that's a permanent job, a full-time job, full-time. Full-time is a minimum of 30 hours. Sometimes you can work up to 60 hours. Depends with you and your employer. So it's under nomination uh, program for the province or job offer so for the nomination you can use the express entry skilled worker and international graduate for the one that requires you a job offer you can use the intermediate skills the high the this one intermediate is for somebody who has who has got at least secondary education but they on top of that they have skills they can drive a truck they can do welding they can do electrician they can they can do those are the skills okay so you need to check what is the noc code for your skill and then the other one is that high skill high skill those means someone who has got at least a degree and then international graduate is someone who has come to study in that province and they want to get permanent resident so uh th that is how you can come under this province uh, how do i find a job i found this one very interesting and i if you checked on my community section in the in this channel, I I shared I, I I what I did I just copied and pasted this, and then I I, I thought you should take your the initiative to come and research further because I was not able to to send you all these links. I just copied and pasted, and then you do the rest of the research. I cannot be eating for you and digesting for you. So there are a number of resources available to help connect you with employers this is the federal job bank these ones are the most genuine sites for you to find jobs work made easier for you those who have been applying for jobs and you cannot find try this i can tell you you're going to find a job offer department of immigration this one job vacancies access career services atlantic immigration and then memorial university career development connector new um newfoundland employment centers these are job sites these are job sites i think i'm going to share this link and then what jobs are in demand healthcare technology aquaculture agriculture these are the jobs in demand okay healthcare 
There is no way they can skip healthcare. Healthcare is in demand not only in Canada, in the UK, in the also in the UK, in the in Germany, in US, world or in Australia, healthcare is, is the thing, is the thing of the of the season. How do I find a designated employer? You can come and read here. I have applied for jobs on the job bank, but employers are not responding to my resume. Anyone can view the job posting, but to register to create a profile, you will need a social insurance number for express entry or express entry profile. Or for CIN is people who are in Canada, or express entry profile is for somebody who is outside Canada. So here it means before you apply to Newfoundland, you need to have a file with the express entry. Something to note here. Number number to be entered during the registration process in a foreign as a foreign as a foreigner you can only set a scene if you have a valid work study or visitor permit in those cases you will be given a temporary scene scene number is scene number is the one that you use to to work in canada every canadian citizen and permanent resident and if you have a study permit or a work permit you're going to have a SIM. It's a number that is going to allow you to file your taxes. So it's it's an is it an ID? It's not an ID as such, but I think it's a very important document. What is my NOC code skill level? How do I find it? If you have not watched my videos for NOC code, you need to go and watch because there is good good information on that video. You cannot come to Canada if you cannot understand what is IELTS English test. What is WES documents verification and what is NOC code? NOC code is going to match your skills from maybe your home country, maybe if you're coming from South Africa, it's going to match that career in South Africa to that one in Canada. Okay, so you need to know whether you're in O, O we say this for managerial level, A is for professionals, B for technical, C and D. Okay, and then uh, for example, software developer falls under NOC two one seven four. A skill type A. Cook falls a cook falls under NOC six three two two. And a skill level B. You so you need to know if you are a cook, a driver. I saw one for the uh, for the tax drivers Uber, Uber drivers. You need to check which NOC code you belong to. So labor market, okay. Guys, you need to read this. I'm going to share this with you. Difference between the types of work permits. Hmm? What happens if my work permit expires during or after nomination? You can read. My spouse or about your spouse, your spouse can apply for open work permit. Do I need work experience to apply for? Yes, you need a work permit. Okay. Do I need English tests? English tests in each of this of the la of the speaking, listening, reading, and writing is required depending on the program. Okay. Yeah. Even have a program for international entrepreneurs. Hmm. Ah, we need a, a CLB of four. Hey, this one we must look at it. Which one is this? Let us see this one that needs a four. Hey. There's so much here to read. I'm not going to read. Ah. Okay. So guys, you see, all this you can read on your own. This one is nomination program, and this one is Atlantic Immigration Pilot. 
you can check the difference. Yeah, I think some of these provinces that are not so famous could be easier for you to get nominated. Hmm? How do I get an education credential assessment? Of course, you use the, the WES. Can I apply under? Okay. Can my family accompany me? Yes. Do I need to have a police clearance? Who qualifies as a dependent child? Do I need a consultant consultation on my application? What community? In case you need consultation, you need Helen. You can use Helen, who is the Canada Immigration Agency. She come on the other channel every Friday. Joyce Content Creation on my other channel for Helen. She come every Friday to address your questions for free. Tomorrow, oh, I'm doing this video on a Thursday. So Helen comes every Friday. And then myself, I come every Monday. Every Monday, I come to interact with you and just catch up. Just catch up with my team. You know, it's good to catch up, not necessarily to answer your questions. It's not all about questions. It's catching up with friends because now we are friends. Aren't we friends? We are friends. So it's just catching up. Monday is for catching up. You can attend if you want to talk to me. If you have always wanted to tell me something, you can come on Monday and then we meet and talk. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot you can learn from this. Yeah. So I'm going to share this website, as I said. And then you can pick what you need from here and run with it. Okay. If you're in this channel, if you have been uh, watching my content and you have not subscribed, you're failing me. You're not being kind. You're not being a good friend. So you need to subscribe so that we do not have a lot of people who have not subscribed and they're watching my content. It's not fair. Even to God, it's not fair to watch somebody's content and you're not supporting their channel. So remember to subscribe always. Not always, it's just once. It's actually just once. Just click. I'm giving you one minute to go click. And then we you put that, that small bell that looks like a bell. It's the one that YouTube is going to use to, to remind you that Joyce has posted a video. Thank you guys for supporting this channel. Those who have subscribed, those who like, those who comment, hugs. I love you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.